And we are live for the first time this season. And it feels like we carried on from the last one. Hey, Leicester 2, Brentford 2. Oh, this is not the start that we wanted. And it's so disappointing because we started off so well in that again. And ignore this little bit here that's happening. I've tried to destroy it. Oh, got a special guest just as we're starting. Back for the first game of the season. Akash is in. Akash, beautiful to have you, my friend. Um, what are your initial thoughts of the game? Initially, I was very happy what I have seen in the first half, but then again, uh, it all went, you know, recap of last season. We shut down after the 70th minute and the second goal, I, I mean, I can accept one goal, but the yeah. second one was just redundant and completely unnecessary. It, it ruined a perfect weekend. It, it, do you know what? It, I was thinking at half time, especially coming into the 50th minute or so, Good, we have a good performance. Brentford aren't really in it. We are controlling the game, which I was really, do you know, what? I'm going to be honest, I was really impressed with Oh, Akash's camera's gone. Um, but yeah, I was really impressed with the way that it was working a lot of the time. You're back, Akash. Um, but anyway, we'll get into the beginning bit. So I was impressed. So things I was impressed with, starting with the formation again, we knew Harvey Barnes was injured, we knew Ricardo was injured. So we probably were going to move away from the 4 2 3 1 that Brendan prefers. And we played 3-5-2, so having Ward in that midfield, um, Fafana, Evans and Marty, 3-5-2. Um, uh, I think in that first half performance, that team and that midfield specifically really controlled that game, winning the ball back in great areas, controlling it, getting the ball out wide to like, um, just especially Castagna on that right-hand side. I think they played really well in that first half. They did, absolutely. We dominated the midfield and first half performance. I really had nothing to complain about. Uh, the, the implementation of the system was good up to that point, but every match is played in two halves. So you don't, yeah. if you don't adapt accordingly, and that's where Brentford won the game. They brought in inspirational substitutions, people with fresh legs, and they got the better of us because I, I don't think Daniel Amarte was looking nearly as sharp as... We expect him to be in the second half and he was looking vulnerable and Brentford was just teasing him with all their manoeuvres and that caught us in the end. But the thing that you mentioned and others do as well, all the Leicester fans, that this this game had, uh, I think, one of the most brilliant midfield displays that we have seen in a long, long time. The complete mm -hmm. dominance of the midfield was there because we don't have wingers in the, for, for this game. So, Vardy was alone, but the threat was everlasting because in the first half we did exceptionally well and I had I had no complaints. Even the players who were tipped for departing us really played their part because Tillemans looks fantastic in this game. I think mm -hmm. it, it's a make or break season for him so that works in our favour. Madison and as, as always great great to see Kiran Drewsbury Hall doing a wonderful job as we expect him to do. Uh, and did he didn't look a bit sharp as he is esteemed to be but it can be manageable because we had others performing. So it, it was never a dull scenario in that first half. But second half, everything went completely, <laughs> yeah. completely to hell. And it's, it's just following on from last season. It's so frustrating because we're a good team, as you saw in the first half. I agree with you with Tillman. I put down in Diddy. I think what it is, he's been injured during preseason. He could tell that he's a little bit behind the rest of the pace, especially in the first half. Nothing too much to pick on if... We played how we did in the first half. In the second half, we go, okay, indeed he's a little bit behind, but he'll get there just with time. But it was, yeah, the, again, Tillemans, again, again, considering that there's been a lot of talk over the summer coming into last year's contract, Arsenal were linked massively with him, played really well. Um, uh, but then I think in the second half, he tired. We know he tires, and there's a reason why they haven't, Arsenal haven't gone out and tried to sign him. He tied in the second half and Brendan again got the substitution wrong. We'll come into that in a little bit later because obviously it's a point that everybody's talking about at the moment. Uh, again, Madison was great. KDH, just just absolutely brilliant. The way he took that goal, he's he's going to be an absolute... I think he's one of the top scorers and assists this season. He was... What, he the, has that confidence. On the pitch, he, was, he was unbelievable. He was everywhere getting the ball, playing some really nice balls in all different directions and bringing other people into play. Forward into the box. I, I can't speak highly enough of how good KDH is. That's exactly why it hurts more. Opening day fixtures, everyone performs, and this new starts. I think properly, this is this is KDH breakout season because last season 
the league didn't know as much as we did he was our talent we were projecting him to be the next uh, urit elements or somebody or or the very next kdh in his own accord but the league didn't know him the fpl owners didn't know him and this was his season this is his season to you know make a name for himself we have monitored him we have seen how good he was at luton and we have seen him last season what he's capable of so his output just goes to ben when it's a draw and i think it was a terrible decision to take him out of this game because what you needed was defenders not not attackers you had a two two nil lead why would you bring another attacking option because if we consider our results of the last season i think two nil at 68th minute is is a pretty decent score and you just scored at the brink of half time uh, the start of the second half so there was no possible explanation that brendan rogers can persuade me with that was needed because i think even if you take daniel amarty off bring in sonchu that makes a bit mm-hmm. sensical to me but whatever he did daka either start him or if you are lagging behind bring him on because his link up with madison in the pre season was good but mm-hmm. the scenarios under which you have brought him wasn't ideal to say the least it really wasn't and again coming in we well, might as well get fit substitution now because kdh first of all the way he took that goal i know i should mention it again sorry drop my pen um was insane really just be, if if that's another player if that's i don't know if that if that's if that's from an arsenal player we are the whole premier league is shouting about it what a way to finish and it's just the same problems again defensively um shout well i'll get, get, get into the comments i know you guys are chatting in as well shout out to doug well done for 2k mate really really proud really really happy for you at least you're not united uh it's we're, we're in the same boat my friend so um yeah we're not united sure but it, it's a sticky one either way i think um we'll get into it yeah the, the strike from kdh but the substitute and you see him on the bench he's like why why have i been taken off for me, if you're going to take anybody off in that match, it was Tillemans because Tillemans is that person that was tiring. We know he tires at 70 minutes and it was the exact 72 minutes. If you're going to change that, then sure. Then if if it was me, there, you would take off, um, you take him off and you bring in Dennis Pratt, give you that power, give you that presence, give you that or overall control in the midfield like we were in the first half. It just didn't, it just didn't, it, it was a mistake by Rodgers and the team. And it was, a ta- for the second half, Rodgers needs to hold himself accountable and go, look, I made the mistake. And I would be more accepting of that, but his 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 substitutions did change the game. And one sub as well, we'll get into one sub in a second, but yeah, that substitution helped Brentford. It did, and... Uh... You have your substitutions, use them. This season has given you five. So don't again understand why only Dhaka. I mean, if he if he did that, I had no complaint if he got other substitutions in. Because Dennis Pratt, as you said, Tillemus was tired. If you bring in Dennis Pratt, who has committed to our cause and wants a place back, if you're not going to give him opportunities when your team is leading, I don't see the point when you are going to introduce him. Because... All of our midfielders played well. He's not a defensive midfielder, so you even if he didn't play well, you can't replace him with Pride. So where does Pride come in in the next game? You are leading, you are in a comfortable position. Just swap the Belgian for Belgian. And I think with Pride, he has a point to prove. He wants to earn his place back. So you can get that added motivation that all these other players are lacking at, at the second half because they have already achieved two goals. So in that retrospective, I think uh, it, it it could have been a great, great move, but we can only lament now because it's done. Yeah, and if again, it's just it is it is annoying considering how how it, it was in our grasp. We could have finished it off, and again, I rate Dakar. I think Dakar is the future. I think he's going to be a success this season. It didn't really make any much sense playing him on because you're playing like what a three four one two with James Madison in that number, and then you're playing a double pivot of KDH and Tillemans, sorry, Indidian Tillemans, which hasn't, again, Indidian's not fully fit, KD, um, uh, Tillemans was tired, you're playing Madison up front, who was doing a lot of, I think he was doing a lot of work further further back as well, letting KDH and Tillemans bomb on a little bit more, but it just didn't get the best out of him, and Dakar is frustrating, because he's such a good player, this wasn't the match for him, this really wasn't the match, we needed somebody to close out the game, and we were saying, I think we were saying in the group chat at the time, um, 
We needed somebody to come in and go, lads, let's close out the game. Yes, we conceded a goal. 2-1, let's sort it out and and just push on to the next level. But we didn't have that at all. As you mentioned, group chat, everybody saw that goal. The second goal of Brentford coming from a miles away mm. because it was it was in that state. You know, we weren't we are completely switched off. We weren't doing anything. We we're not clearing the ball. Brentford was getting easy crosses in, and even even Tony missed a sitter. I would think mm -hmm. because the I, many of the balls that came in, you know, we are caught off guard, which wasn't happening in the first half. So in the second half. I am thinking what Brendan Rogers saw to make those substitutions because clearly the back line was struggling. Johnny Evans wasn't doing great. I think he, Amartya was Marty, wasn't doing really? great. Clear. Yeah, Amartya was wasn't doing great. Really he was strong. being bullied. Mm. He was being bullied. And I don't know if, if like whether it was tiredness, it was confidence or, or his technical ability, but he was struggling. And Sancho has been in the bench for a long time. Uh, during the closure of the last season, he didn't participate in four games, I think. So, you know, just use him. Just use him for, you know, this 20, 15, 20 minutes and see where it yeah. goes from there. Because you have to make decisions now or later in the January window whether you need some players or you have to sell them. Because this window wasn't sufficient to do our business. We did nothing. Casper Michael going is his own decision. But as a club, we did nothing. So we have to test out these players because even if you don't have a purpose for Dennis Pratt and you are not able to give him proper chances, then what's the point? I guess so. And I guess so. And the thing is, the only player that I could think if he's having a struggle would be to drop out, um, put Castagna in that back line, then put put Thomas on that left and then put um, Justin on the right. I think that's the only way you can kind of take that. And Again, it's not a great situation because if you had if you had somebody else in there that they could create, it's not ideal. And we don't really have looking at the bench now. Again, I'll, I'll bring up on screen the the initial um, the, the the bench at the moment. So we're looking at Ward, Castagna, Amate. Um, oh, you just ignore them, Chelsea fans. Uh, so so looking at the bench, Siunchu was there, Everson was there, um, Mendy was there, Tom Thomas was there, Pratt, O'Brien, Perez, Ianacho, Daka. Very attacking wise, but Again, A, we only use one of them, and B, I think so. Vestergaard is missing and Samore is missing. It's just the thing is, it's annoying because we were we were so good in so many parts of that game, and we've just thrown it away. Um, and Daniel Amati was at fault, but it's the substitutions. Thomas Frank at 2 0 down, they had no right to come back into the game, but one goal, and, they, and it shows you you cannot switch off in the Premier League. Even against this team that Brentford are one of the they're one of the teams that we're batting relegation this season. Let's be honest. Even they've come and gone, right, we can we can get a couple of it's, it's silly mistakes that we needed to fix. And then five substitutions they made Tony scored and um I know he wasn't sub substitute, but and then um the silver scored. That's what we needed. We needed somebody to come in and change it, go, right, solidify the game. They had the right mentality and they came on to us. You could felt feel the crowd die, and it was just we were, we were saying as well, we were just, we were, it, because we've seen it so much, we were just waiting for that second goal to go in because we've seen it so many times last season. Yes. And uh, during the first half, I was really, really noticing some changes that we didn't have last season. I think set pieces improved and all that, but everything has gone down the drains now after the second half. Uh, you need to manage better the game. Like like a team like us who hasn't made a single signing, you don't have an edge over other teams because I get that argument a lot that, you know, we haven't signed anybody, but we are the same team. So we should be functioning the same way and achieving eight like last season. But that is not a logical explanation because other teams have reinforced their squad. So everybody has gone a level above. They have got rid of redundant players. They have solidified themselves so we are dropping even even if this if other teams are performing like usual and we get the same results i think it will not still be enough because other teams against other teams will be performing better because somebody like a manchester city is is out of the question of defeating this season and there is a huge disparity because 
many strikers coming in liverpool manchester united is doing their stuff as usual and without a season i don't think if we perform like this eighth same seasonal finish is not possible if you in, if you don't invest in the squad i think they are capable of you know doing having a great season despite saying that but to do that your man management skills have to be on point and another thing that i really liked I don't know. I am just a spectator sitting here from miles away and seas away. So the atmosphere was really, really. I think it was so great. It was electrifying. I was hearing the the chants, the songs, everything, the ovations. You know, I think that really boosted the morale up. Mm-hmm. And if we continue to do that, I think the audience can be the fans can be the twelfth man that we need because. a lot of fears in a lot of fears uh, you know a team like liverpool they didn't have the greatest squad but they managed because they had their home advantage the cop was yeah. just crazy and big big teams dynasties were scared to face them there and that's why in the league everybody had them figured out but in the, in their own accord in their home turf it was really hard to beat that steven gerrard squad so we need, we can establish that it's, it's not going to happen overnight but against the smaller sides who don't have a bigger ground or a bigger crowd or a bigger draw than us we can really exploit that we can make them nervy because the atmosphere speaks for themselves the sidelines the everything everything works against you and then it's a mental game so accord along with that the manager has to do better because if if he's losing the game despite all those efforts it again it's it's again brendan out brendan in brendan out brendan in conversation and even then at the ground in the first half they were singing brendan rodgers blue white army the fans want to be behind him but when we, this is just a continuation of last season and he will play and i just don't want to hear the excuses of oh we've got the same squad oh we we've, we've not brought in the players that i want to play in you're you're not addressing the point in this as well um kind of coming away from that because we could honestly i guess we could talk about this for another 10 15 minutes just going on the same thing i want to talk about a couple of players that did impress me regarding that well I, um danny ward really really impressed with him um obviously he's not he's only played a couple of times for leicester city is commanding the back line was great corners coming in getting it right i've got it grab the ball um there was a point where they had a set piece i think after like seven, uh, in the second half came in grab the mind grab the ball really impressed with with him and i i think he's a he's a great player for that number 1 um with diverson pushing him close but i think yeah with with danny ward it was it was refreshing to see us at corners defend them um him claiming the ball his distribution was again i love schmichael but his distribution was better than schmichael's and it was really like you could see the defense is kind of like lighting up a little bit more okay this guy's got it and he can pass the ball out quite easily across the pitch i think dan uh, danny ward deserves a place in this squad and i was vocal about it in the last season and uh, well cash with michael the era had to end somewhere we can't stick with the nostalgia forever yeah yes he is a club legend but he has his own aspirations he has his own set of challenges that he wants to achieve and i think it get it gets monotonous after a time you know if you if you just boot on fifa and you play with the same team 10 seasons 11 seasons it, it gets boring you have the same fixtures same cup competitions you need diversity so i understand where he's coming from he's don't forget he is a son of the danish legend so he obviously needs to you know step out of again it's a new challenge he has to go out he has to face some of the best strikers i think i think when you are facing psg you are competing in europe i think you have a better chance of utilizing your last two three seasons and uh, he has done the job for us and i think it, it, the move was beneficial for both the parties because really we didn't need him this season we needed a fresh somebody with different approach to the game and danny ward has been sitting a long long time this is only his second premier league game and that that sounds just crazy because second premier league game after all this time i think he did exceptionally well he was not bad by the defense in the second half but uh, the, the intricate things that he did and contrasting to smichael whatever he did i think i was thoroughly impressed with that so yeah. expecting more brilliant things from him and he will be he will be trying to push really hard because 
in some of the games uh, at international level he is losing his place to uh, yeah. i mean they are switching back and forth between ward and the other goalkeeper so he Hennessy. wants to cement his place yeah i can't see who's the name. second keeper at forest <laughs> so there we go so 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 there is that internal rivalry so i think i think he will do very well if he is properly you know given the support it's it's his first game so you know whatever you do behind the curtains in the training grounds it's very hard for a goalkeeper to establish those those communication those split second decisions in the on the field kasper michael has been doing it for 11 years so he had a connection with the defensive lineup but what will take i think two three games to you know really cement that place and his command over the back line and our defense keeps on changing because injuries and all that so it, it's not ideal for him but i think he will he will grab the opportunity and now he's a number one choice so there is not that much of competition but i think if he doesn't do well lester will be swooping in for a keeper so the pressure is on him the pressure is on him but i think today he performed better than i expected losing caspers michael is a big hole at the back because he's been there for so long we know what we're going to get um but ward i think that the challenge for ward would be next week against Arsenal because that's where you're going to have to pull out those massive saves that Kasper Michael does. Brentford didn't really challenge us, to be perfectly honest with you. The stuff that Ward did, he competed at a Brentford level. And again, credit for Brentford, you were great today. But there is a level this week against Brentford at home and there's another level against Arsenal away. In the form they're in, with the pre-season they've had, with the amount of goals they've scored, we need to be looking and going, right, that is going to be the test for for Ward to see if he's number one. Um, for those of you as well that I've listened this morning to um, Owen Parramatkin on BBC Radio Leicester, he has an interview with, um, Pre I don't know if you heard it, Preston North End's um, writer for the BBC. And he goes, Daniel Iverson's one for the future. He goes, we, we are getting a Nick Pope S keeper, which is really interesting to hear as well. So we'll have to see about that. But um, I think I think in general... It's such a frustrating performance. And people are talking about that as well. Having a 2-0 up, then losing it, taking off the wrong player, because again, Brendan definitely did take off the wrong player. Um, but there are some positives. We just need to sort out this defence. And I know Brendan, I think one thing Brendan will do is he'll blame, oh, we had an injury to Ricardo, we had an injury to other people, and that affected our squad. Excuses will always be there and the manager can use it. But... It doesn't feel right as a fan or anybody. The You're pundits right, are criticizing us. Hello? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. So the, pun the, the pundits oh, are criticizing us. Everybody one. is picking up on us, right? So you you have the manager to blame because he promised a refresh, rebuild. However, you rephrase it, it means the same. And when that thing didn't happen, I think the responsibility is on you because you are the manager you are you have to manage individuals and if you are not doing that um, premier league is is a cutthroat competition other leagues you can suffice but not in this one so i think he should do a couple of things like he shouldn't give daniel ward the privilege of being leicester's number 1 throughout the season he should switch it up because I feel, I still feel Kasper Schmeichel wasn't challenged at all last season. And that's why he didn't improve as much as one can still do. Because keepers tend to age like fine wine. So he could have improved in some areas. But I heard him on the Ben Foster podcast and he was explaining his actions. He mm. said, we keepers think, think uh, like, like his, he, he is very, very morose towards the criticism that he receives. He really loathes to come out of the box and whatever we blame it he thinks he's standing by his uh, by his thoughts and processes that he has learned but the game is changing it's an evolutionary process you have to change so for that i think you have to switch it up depending on the difficulty levels of the fixtures that we have and we have you know for the arsenal game i wouldn't even think of bringing in Avarsen in but against southampton or maybe against uh, Bournemouth I, I would I would try I would be tempted to try or even yeah. if we like secure our uh, FA Cup draw against a smaller third division second division team I would be tempted to do that because I think that will 
you know, let us feel how Everson really is because preseason again is a very short time and very irresponsible time to judge any player because it 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 is just no stakes, right? It is no stakes, but it's again, it's the the problem kind of comes back to to Rogers and the way that he works and. The, 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 he has his favourite players and it's really like for example the situation with Yuri Tillemans is messing up the club again I, I would go I'll, I'll give you a kind of a sneak insight from what I've heard as well so obviously he wants to leave um, Tillemans has said yeah I, I'm not going to sign a new contracts. we're going to leave I'm going to see where the options are available however Rogers is still playing him if this was Pearson he goes you know how I feel about a player that doesn't want to doesn't commit his future here leave you're on the you can you can you have your choice, but I have the choice not to play you. I will play somebody else that's committed and wanted to this club. Rod, and, and that's the stance that the club has taken. Going right, if you don't want to sign a new contract, that's fine. We've been begging you for it. We've to, to give you a contract. You refuse to sign it for a year. No problem. Go and sit on the bench. And and Rogers has kind of gone. No, no, no. no. He deserves to be part of my plans. Part of the reason why is because look, look, he took off KDH instead of taking off Tillemans. Is a perfect example of Rogers going out of his way to go right. Um, no, I need I need this player in my team. Now he was good, don't get me wrong, but we know he tires. And I'm not saying it's all his fault, but that KDH would have ran back and go, not on my watch. And you saw you saw KDH. I don't know if it's showed on your stream. Your stream was home. KDH is sitting there going, why have I been taken off? Why have I been taking up? I've just scored a brilliant goal. I've been running that midfield. He and he has been, and we lost that. They came on to us, and we couldn't live with it. Um, and part of it is our defensive frailties. And we, yes, we are low on defenders, but just it's just not good enough, really. Absolutely not. And you you make a couple of interesting points there because what message does it send to KDH who has? Who has played one of his best games? Mm-hmm. Had a good preseason, had everything. What does he need? And uh, uh, the way I see it, I don't think the the media portrayal of Brendan Rogers, whatever he says in front of the press or anybody else, I don't think he trusts his team because, and and he is a very lanky decision maker. Because if he trusted whatever he has got, because. You know, to cover up the rebuild or refresh, he always says that he has quality in the squad. Mm-hmm. But you are not sure. You have to play Tillemans to ensure that your job stays. You are, you are, you are uh, free from scrutiny. You need that additional talent. You don't have enough belief in a Dennis Pratt or anybody else because the players who want to go out doesn't want to play for the badge anymore. Doesn't want to extend so that we can get a profitable exchange. You're still playing him. So that makes him a very, very easy going manager. And, and I think what does that I've say seen... to the rest of the squad. What is that play say to exactly. the rest of the squad? That... Exactly. You're not rewarded for your loyalty. So mm-hmm. why will not Awazli Fafana think that what is what, what does this even mean? Like I am giving so much to this squad. I'm I'm the best defender this squad has got. But the manager is so fickle. Mm. It's totally. And that's the thing, it's it's Little things that that because I would go if I was in his position. Well, why have I been taken? Why why has KDH been taken off? Yuri Tillemans is on running down his contract. Refuse and again the players know this. They hear more than we do from the outside. They know that he's refused to sign a contract. So take him off. Give again. Give Dennis Pratt, who again as of having the way that we do things. It's it's. Give him Pratt a chance. I know he's in the last year, last year of his contract, but he's come out publicly and said, I want to fight for my place. It's not worked out, but look, give me half an hour. I can show you what I'm going to do. And fair play to him. Tillemans hasn't done that. Mm. Um, so there's things like that, which is just, he has his favourites and he keeps playing them. It, it's just it's just annoying. And it's, he's, Tillemans isn't going to be the future. And I'm just going to bring up some comments again, because uh, BBC Radio Leicester just com- completed an interview. So, um, Going to give you on the result, he goes, It's disappointing not to win the game, having played well for 65 minutes. Everything had what we wanted, but we lost too many balls, gave away possession away, and then we lose on our organization. Again, it sounds like he's putting the blame onto the players, and they are to blame to a certain extent. They were losing balls in, I think that was the difference in the first half and the second half overall. The first half, we were losing balls in poor low, poor spaces. 
the second half we were losing we were losing them in worse positions um and we need to make sure that we we were winning the balls in the first half i don't see why there's such a change in mentality but part of that is down to substitutions and that will hurt us eventually because yeah. these are the games that when you when you reflect back these are the games that are winnable and we lose or draw them i think a draw is equal to losing because this one feels like a loss so at the end, we miss Europe or, or tertiary European competition by one or two points. This is going to hurt us. And the, the reasons are very, very basic. I, I don't think a manager of a top quality Premier League manager should be again doing this kind of silly things. Next game, you have to go a notch above. It's Arsenal. They have a good squad. They have a young, youngest squad in the Premier League. They have, but they will utilize quality. those substitutions. Yeah, they will they utilize really those substitutions. Good they are, and, and we are not going to win the midfield battle because they have a stagged midfield. We had that advantage today and we just blew it. Mm. And we weren't challenged that much defensively. But to be honest, there's going to be a lot more opportunities against Arsenal. And that's where I say that's where a big... I'm not feeling confident going into the match. Again, we're going away to that. So we'll have to see. We might go live outside the ground. Um, but another one as well from BBC Radio Leicester. So we've got... Rod's on the substitution of KDH. They changed their midfield, so we wanted to push the strikers further up the field because they went to a back three and had two deep line midfield players. But why will so that we, translates I think, to, again, that translates to Thomas Frank got the better of me? Because yeah, I was due. I, yeah, and basically, I think somebody put it in here. Uh, somebody put it in the comments. Sorry, uh, um, we over. Uh, yeah. Brendan Rodgers, um, Bruno Juice puts in. Um, Brendan Rodgers is overcomplicating out of guaranteed points. And I think that's that, that's that's kind of pretty that's much true. it. He overcomplicates it. He thought of it too much. And instead of going, do you know what we need? To, again, if you're going to play another player, get a Samore on, or get get three. You know how we did against um, Liverpool, where we went to a three, four, then three in front, and then hold that midfield down, leave up front um, Madison and Vardy just in case you're on the break, and just secure that midfield. And so you go right here. Here's what we're going to do. He overthought it. And again, Dakar is a great player. I didn't really see much of him in the game, to be honest. I didn't really see... He wasn't effective. Did he actually affect the game? Not really. I, that That's what is surprising because he did it completely wrong. Brentford were trying to do one thing and Brendan Rodgers anticipated another and he made those substitutions and... It was just foolish. When you are having a 2 nil lead, why do you need to score a third goal and not protect what you have? That just sounds bizarre. Why do you need an extra attacker? Why not a defensive midfielder if the current one that you are having is struggling or just just reshifted to... I mean, n number of defenders, three centre-backs, five uh, two wing-backs. Get them on. Get Clear defensive game. I think Leicester were pretty unsure in the last 15 minutes what they are trying to do. What was their identity? What was their purpose? Because you start with one tactic with certain players, they know where this this guy will be, that guy will be. But when you make substitutions, that that thing just disbalances itself. And the defensive line was always struggling. You you can see it. How can the manager not? Yeah. We can see it, and that's the thing from the ground. I think the people can see it as well. And it's one thing he's put as well, just on a separate comment. Rodgers lack on impetus in the first twenty five minutes. It's the first game of the season. There was a bit of fatigue hacking in. That's what happens when you tire a bit. You suffer technically. So we didn't keep the ball and we didn't secure it well enough. Well, the answer, so you, but your answer to that, Brendan, was to take off our most, uh, one of the most technical players, hardest working players who was not tired in KDH. This doesn't really make any sense to me. So you're saying one thing, but who gets tired the most out of the squad? It's what, Daniel Amati being one and the other person being Yuri Tillemans. Let's be real. And that's, I think, you, you caught him thrice there because Yuri Tillemans was tired. Do you take, the other guy off. Yuri Telemans is not a great great at pressing or collecting because he has considered the most number of penalties. So he's always a yeah. always a danger in that respect. But 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 KDH does the job. He tracks back. He is very nitty gritty and he's old fashioned. So he gets those job done. And third, I think again, Yuri Telemans wants to leave. So why the extra added trust to Yuri Telemans, but not somebody who can be our future captain? Yeah, exactly. And it makes no sense. It genuinely makes no sense. I'll see if there's any more comments after that. 
But um, it, it's frustrating. But frustrating. And I just don't want the season to keep continuing like this. Because, again, we've got Arsenal next. Um, we will see what happens as, as we come up as well. But it's not it's not good. Um, Rogers on um, Brentford. They are tough opponents. They showed last season they're a dangerous team. For the first 65 minutes, we're very good at the game. Uh, we deserve a huge amount of credit. But at the end of the day, Brendan, sure, for 65 minutes. A game isn't played in 65 minutes. played in 90 and we've seen this, I think it was the, if you remember the, I think you we were on the live stream for the Brentford, sorry, the the Burnley at home, where they just conceded in the last minute. And it was, we were just coming on and coming on. And it just didn't, yeah. it, it, we, we just didn't provide enough stability at the back. And it, yes, we had to change stuff. Yes, this was, um, people go, oh, um, the injuries are an issue. It's just not an excuse now. Because these issues could be sorted out. We've made improvements. And, and this, this performance, as 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 Brendan is directing it, this performance is not the team's fault. It's not. It's absolutely not. You know what capabilities Amate has. He's not a top mm. quality centre back. Jokes aside, we, we we like to project him as one, but he is not. I mean, get, let's get real. You you can't say Kelly Renato is the most threatening striker in the Leicester squad. He's not. Even if he's scoring most amount of goals, you can see the areas where he lacks and you will always be unsure of how his performance will be in, in a certain day. So I think Daniel Amarte falls in the same category. And you just can't go on like this. It's a first game. Yeah, you have your excuses ready. You, you can say we played for 65 minutes, 70 minutes. doesn't matter. It was a winnable game. I wouldn't have said otherwise. It was a draw 1-1. Or, or something. I mean, the, the promise I, I saw in the first half, it completely switched off in the second. So that is what I'm, I can't come to terms with. Because you had the quality, you had the advantage, the crowd was behind you, the midfield yeah. was performing at its best. So there's, there, there can't be an excuse for this one. I don't think so. And it's not a good enough excuse at the moment. I mean, we've got Arsenal next week. We'll have to see what happens there. It is the beginning of the season, but there's still there's lots of improvement to make because at the moment, the way we're playing, it's it's not good enough. Um, and it just seems like the same thing. Brendan, we have to change it. We have to get better because otherwise we just about held on for last season. And I don't want the same thing to happen this season. So thank you for everybody that's that's watching as well. Again, I think um, I think a, a pop, actually one last point to finish on. Jamie Vardy starved of service. And for the rest of the game. But I guess as well, you had people around him. I think his role isn't running anymore. You've got Madison, KDH yeah. that are making the runs overlapping. Um, Castagna and Justin making those runs um, at wing backs, which I really enjoyed. But Vardy really didn't get much of the ball, did he? He didn't. No. Though he got an, uh, got, got some things right. Uh, he was tracking back and doing a lot of stuff. So that was really pushing Madison and others to push forward and until until his I think wingers come back fit wingers I think we're going to struggle a bit in those areas because even with two strikers up front it's not going to help much because which pairing works best for us is it Daka Inacho is it Vardy Inacho or is it Vardy Daka we don't know Brendan does surely doesn't know so we have to try and test so the forward line is I mean as long as you have KDH or Madison or Vardy, you yeah. always pose a threat. So midfield is our best bet right now. But in the next game, we are going to be heavily challenged by it because Arsenal is, is going to be tricky. It's going to be tough. And we've not won there. I can't. I genuinely can't remember the last time we even got a point there. Yeah. We've had quite a few draw, quite a few losses there. So we're going down to the game. We'll let you know what we think of that. But yeah, thank you for everybody that's watching again. We appreciate you tuning in for the first live stream. We hopefully... We'll be more positive next time, but we'll have to see. Um, yeah, thank you. We'll be doing some previews with um, for, for the press conferences coming up, but also for the um, for the other stuff that's coming up as well. So make sure to stay tuned to the channel. Thank you for getting us to 2K. We really appreciate it. Again, make sure to go and check out Akash. The link in the description to put it down below. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see everybody in the next video. So goodbye.